Here we Recording go. in progress. <laughs> so we've got big Shane Haller in, in, in on, on the call today. Um, three oh, eight. We've got Craig Foster, super heavy, and the smallest person right now, the only one here under 300 pounds, is our guest today, Fernando Arias. And everyone wants to know, what's it like fitting through doorways? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> You just got a new tattoo on your hands, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I just got it like does last hurt? No, like, I didn't. That... No, you know, I the didn't. fingers. No. I feel like the fingers is like super bony. It's gonna be like a a tender spot. I thought so too, but as soon as I started, it was like twenty minutes. I was done. It was good. Yeah, uh, you're covered. You're inked up. Craig's got a couple couple sweet arm tats. Then me and Pat have nothing. We, we got the bar burn. We got the bar. Yeah, burn. I do. Yeah. I do have a bar burn every week. I like a scar now from a scab. It's it it it'll always be that pale patch on the back to remind us that we're we're a little better at squatting than the average Joe. Or you just have lighter skin. Hey. <laughs> Craig, Craig's got a bar burn too. You just can't see it as good. <laughs> My bar guy. But I swear, so have- like in the middle, there's like a triangle where like the trap fold kind of area where the bar doesn't burn and i swear that is the itchiest spot and the hardest spot to reach just can't get to it i feel like i just always have mine like and then just when it's healing up you bench so you, know, you just tear it up even more and then it's just it's just always raw <laughs> there's never like a good that you're not doing either oh i, I bench before i squat I, I got the the two days switched up because, like, getting all the way out to, to get the, the shoulders under the bar, the elbows under the bar, completely destroys my upper body for the next day. So, like, you know how shitty my bench is and, it, and like, it, how slow it is. It just gets even worse if I bench after I squat. Damn. 628, 635, shitty benches, wrong. <laughs> I know. We'll see you have the better bench in 13 weeks or 12 weeks now. Uh, you, guys are, you guys are both kind of popping off right now. You guys are doing different stuff though. Like Craig's doing like a ton of like reps and sets, and Pat's doing like short as hell rest periods with bands and everything else like that, building up super speed. So, big volume guys. Yeah, big well, volume guys. How do you even um persona or how do you even put rest period into the volume equation? Because like you've got rep sets and um weight, but like you can you can say the volume is that multiplied, but like how do you even multiply the the the, the rest period into that? It just it's volume without being volume. I try to just do uh, four minutes, four and a half minutes. If I'm doing like eight reps, eight to ten, I feel that's for me that's good. Four four and a half minutes. Gross. Well, especially because you just dropped down from like tens, eights to like five, so it was like a huge like it wasn't even like there was no like seven six five you know what i mean you just went you jumped right back down yeah so he was probably even even better rested so so what are we going to call this meet in this podcast that we can't talk about <laughs> uh jane go <Doe> meet <laughs> the, the the one meet that we want to talk about but none of us are allowed to talk about the Voldemort. Would it just be the Voldemort, the meat that shall not be named? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you squatting on that shirt tomorrow, Fern? Uh, uh, maybe. I haven't tried it on yet. Z said that he stained his up real bad, dude. I'm telling you, mine's going to be... Craig and I took pictures in ours the other night, and yeah. uh, like he was already so... Like, he was sweating through his like immediately, and I just kind of like, yeah. put it out there to Richie. I was like, I was like dude... This is gonna be soaked by deadlifts. We might need like a couple, a couple of these. You know what I mean? For real, uh, we'll need a couple of shirts. There, there's a reason they, they <laughs> use white t-shirts for white t-shirt contests. <laughs> That's what it's gonna be. <laughs> Get white, the entire white t-shirt and then, then blood from bar burn and everything else on your back. All tore up. It's gonna be nice. Yeah, I don't like I don't like white shirts too much because they just get dirty way too quick. Oh yeah. Yeah, same with white shoes super. though. They look clean, but then it's, yeah. you gotta like tiptoe throw them away. Over everything. You got like yeah. one good use, and that was it, and that's it. Yeah, that's the all only thing that the only thing that stays clean that's white would probably be cars. Yeah, not even, not, not even, not if you live up north. I feel like if you're if it's 
fight. Oh. Like, Fern was up in like PA, Jersey, like hats in Hampshire, New Hampshire. I feel like driving around in the winter, dude, you get all that black slush all over the bottom yeah. of your car. It's all caked up and everything. Yeah. That is a pain in the ass. That's a big pain in the ass. But the yeah. salt stains white. So like black cars, it just looks all like you, you, you get like waves of white all over the side of the car, but white car, yeah. especially with a good like pearl finish doesn't stain sheesh i don't know shit about cars i know how to get to the gym that's what i use mine for i get like i stay over <laughs> work from home and I just drive straight to the gym back and forth so i'm, I'm pretty good on those but um burden's coming out here tomorrow to uh to his last heavy squat he's got a meet in three weeks and he's got another one like 10 weeks after that and he's got an event in between that and he's got yeah. two or three other comps lined up after that dude's fucking Knocking them all out here. I swear Fern's the only person who could rival Dan with how many meets he can do in a single year and still <laughs> took over like at least 2,200 in each of them. He trades with him now. Oh, Sometimes, man. It makes sense then. Yeah. How's he been training? How's he? Has he been training consistently or has he just been like here and there? Maybe like twice a week, I think he's been there. I mean, he came out of nowhere. He squatted like something over eight and wraps like super wow. fast. And then I think That's he had- Yesterday, yeah. before, he, like, threw on 500 and repped it, for, I think, like, five or six reps for fun. Yeah, That's must be strength. nice. <laughs> yeah. his, strength, his strength never went anywhere. Like, he's still strong as shit, you know? When I saw him at the meet, I was like, I thought you were going to get smaller. And he's like, nope. He's, like, the exact same size as he was yeah. last year when we were competing. Yeah. Just as big. Like I always said that I'm gonna go into bodybuilding once I'm done, but like Dan, he, he goes into powerlifting when he's done with powerlifting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the man just never quits. He's just yeah. uh, I he might take a, a year off one. and then come in and break an all-time world record. Yeah, Jeez. he's he's, in, he's incredible. That meet's gonna be crazy though, because it's like there's gonna be it's gonna be a big multiply meet, but then like there's you got Dan's doing it, Shane's King. doing it. And Derek? Derek's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Derek's, Derek's doing it too. May. Yeah. It's in May in Florida, Daytona Beach. Oh. Yeah. Mem- Memorial Day weekend, I think. They're, they're going to be using a kabuki bar at that meet too. They're using those F8 shirts, those super band shirts. Ooh. Yeah. So but crazy. They're gonna oh, oh. Throw to move kabuki. as much weight as possible. The Ray McCartney. Are you going to squat on the kabuki bar too? Uh, yeah. Squat bar? I don't, I don't think they're using the squat bar. I forgot what, what they're using. They He's like a 65, though, don't they? He's a 65 pound bar. They got Phil yeah. doing it, too. Phil's doing a uh, single ply or multiply. Multiply. He said it's going to be his first multiply meet. He's ridiculous. Dan? No, Phil. See, that's like almost. Oh. That's crazy. Like, to me, like, the amount of times you compete, but then the fact that he literally trains in all three pretty consistently. Like, he just goes back and forth. And, like, you train with him, like, yeah, I feel like he, he was lax as hell when we hung out in the warm up room. So I feel like he kind of yeah. probably just approaches his training like that too. It's just kind of like, what's like one week today. raw? The one week is in wraps. The one week it's in a suit. It's like it's so, every week is something different. I but remember all, like, he, he leading up to the pro, he uh, he squatted like a thousand in a suit, like four or five weeks out. Just to feel it, feel it out. I was like, oh, I was I was sleeping on him. I was like, "There's, there's no way this, this, this way of training is going to produce anything good on the platform." <laughs> then he comes out, squats nine fifty, and like has balls out for the rest of the meet. And I'm like, "Well, shit, I should not a- a- equate any sort of anyone's training numbers to what's going to happen on the platform." It's, it's this new he, era. It doesn't even translate anymore. He did ten fourteen in training that prep too. Yeah, yeah. His opener was 950, right? And I think he wanted to go for the 1,000, but I don't think he got it. I think, I think he all, that's, it all he got was just his opener, just the 950. Yeah, yeah no, third attempt, yeah. They kept right lighting him, I think, for mm-hmm. depth, I think. Much, yeah, I think it was yeah. depth. I think yeah. it was depth on all after yeah, the first two. Yeah. How much do you think that, that like, um, Garrett always, like, harping on Phil for squatting high in training, like, affects how the judges end up judging him? Like, th- does social media go into any, like... I think so, absolutely. It's like I subconsciously, think- like, you're going to pay a little more attention versus somebody you don't even know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure all the judges know everyone, and they watch everyone. Absolutely. They're training. It's, so it's kind of like they're waiting. 
Oh, so so the the key is just never post training. I I see it. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah, but if, then, they, if they how's everyone supposed to know what you're doing, bro? No one's gonna not post training. Come on, I know. <laughs> you gotta subtly flex on the boys. Sometimes. That's what the whole point of Instagram is for. <laughs> <laughs> Reflexing. They definitely watch that stuff, though. They definitely see, and they they keep in mind like, oh, this guy has squatted high in training. Like, I gotta look, you know, get on that, mm -hmm. get a little closer, watch. It almost like it's almost better just to fly in like under the radar and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, much, yeah. Like, I feel like you did that poll in me, and I didn't know half the people that were competing at that. I knew like you and some of the ABS guys, but like I have no idea like who the rest of those lifters are. You know what I mean? No, and they, they were, were they were really strong. Like the one Conrad had, yeah, nine thirty seven, like really quick, dunked it, dunked, and it was fast. Yeah, he's competing at Clash, so we're competing against each other again at Clash. He got the oh, end. Is, is that going to be a mono lift or is that going to be a mono? Yeah, special two bars and mono. I think it's it's cool how they kind of go like back and forth for like. Like when when uh, Amon was over here, like he was kind of just talking about like they're like really picky with like the rules and stuff they do and st like as far as just like the IPF IPF standards, yeah. so they're gonna be like super strict on it. They like doing the stiff bar stuff. The meets run hella quick. Like they were like three yeah. four hours. You said last. I mean, it's uh, last last year was like two two and a half hours. I think we started like at four forty five ish. We were, I did my last pull before seven. Yeah, Damn. I was telling I was There's telling no Craig, man, it's... for uh, for the Voldemort dude, we're gonna have to all be in some big shape here, man. We're gonna have to. I feel yeah. like I'm only gonna take like maybe like two squat attempts or something, yeah. or like like you know you're gonna have to like kind of pace out that stuff just to kind of give yourself time, or you like skip a second just so you can sit there and take it on a third and take a little bit longer of a break or something. I don't know. Yeah, but I, um, I mean, Phil brought up a good point. It's also higher up, you know, it's like elevation. Yeah. Oh yeah, it'd be tough. We're gonna have to be like training with like snorkel masks and stuff, like those shitty elevation <laughs> vein masks to get in shape for this shit. Gonna, yeah, just do all our squats with like the mask on. It's. I know it sounds stupid. Like we sound like old people, like talking about the weather or something. But it's a real thing. Like when uh, they do the Shaw Classic up in uh, it's not Colorado Springs. It's up in um, Estes Park, which is like Rocky Mountains, basically in Colorado, dude. They have at least three or four strongmen that just collapse every year and have to be like oxygen tanked up because they can't fucking breathe up there, man. It's crazy. Air, air. You gotta you suck in as much air as you want. It's not doing anything for you. It's not as yeah. It's not as much as you're used to. We're gonna have to be in shape. Some people travel like a month ahead. There's this kid that wants to do the shot classic this year. It's like 24, and he said he's gonna travel up there like a month before just just to get used to that. Elevation and you know all that stuff. Damn, I think that's a guy. That sounds like a guy that's like hella bought in though. Like he's like he probably spent all a lot of money on different. Yeah, I was just I sent um I sent Pat this uh, screenshot the other day because like he's been he was like posting like his like blood pressure being super low and stuff and like he's always super on top of his cardio and everything. And uh, I was like, damn, dude, like you're kind of like motivating me to do this, but I always like. For me, it's like, do I want to wake up like 30 or 45 minutes earlier to go walk or do I want to sleep? And I feel like sleep is kind of more, yeah, more oh, if important. You, if you're waking but, up and you're you're cutting into your sleep, you're basically stepping over dollars to pick up pennies at that point. Yeah. So I like, so you're just my justification. Because I was yeah, literally yeah. working from home. So I sleep like r literally right there. And I just have to clock in like literally right here. So as long as I'm out of bed by like 7.55 and I clock in by like 8, like... I'm I'm set, but Dude, that's how I work from, the same way. Yeah, <laughs> but because I work from home, I have one of those those one of those raising desks. So I just bought one of those like mini treadmills, like those like ones uh, that are like two hundred dollars, <laughs> bro. So I'm gonna be lean as fuck <laughs> in April. I'm gonna be getting steps in all day. You guys gonna be walking and working. I picked up a was, uh, uh, a treadmill. Office are they actually small? Three? Huh? The treadmill. Oh, it's on the yeah, it's a, like an actual treadmill. It's just a miniature one. It's a mini treadmill, so there's no top part. It's probably like maybe three feet wide. And like I checked, and like it holds my body weight because that we have one in our gym that like you step on it and it kind of like like it like weighs it rolls, the whole thing down. Yeah. yeah, it does not feel natural. So like this thing is like 
I mean, it should be pretty good. It's going to take a little bit to get used to, but um, I don't know. I got to, I got to keep up with Pat here. If we're like, if we're, if we're looking at it like a pie, right. If Pat's sleeping better than me and he's recovering better than me, which is like walking and doing all that extra, like health sheesh, like I need to do that kind of shit too, dude. Like it doesn't like the gym is a third. I need to do the other that's yeah. like a terrible pie chart. And the other two thirds. That's what I did this year. <laughs> I remember I told you I hired the nutrition coach, got my blood pressure down. He has me walking and all that stuff. So, yeah. Hiring a nutrition coach was probably one of the best things that I ever did. Like, I was trying to do my own nutrition for a while. Like, I was going to like the vertical diet seminars and trying to do my own thing. And then, like, I'll see on Instagram and, and there's people like, um, Little guys who are like 220, like Patrick Horvath, who are, who are eating 6,000 calories a day and barely maintaining. I'm like, well, I have to be eating 8,000 calories a day. And I ended up getting up to, I think my heaviest weigh-in at the doctor was like 387 or 390. And I was like, this isn't working. I, I need someone to tell me what to do because I'm just yeah. not holding myself accountable enough. And now I have a uh, angry black lady who yells at me if I eat peanut butter. <laughs> <in the day. laughs> They don't know a joke. I had it for 30 years. I still got it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, it was it was probably the better decision I made for training and competing, but everything coming up. I just feel better. I won like three notches in on my belt. I'm still 290 under 300, but after you probably feel better though. You know what I mean? Like yeah, after, after Canada, we're gonna bump up. Like we're already bumping up slowly. He wants to come into like 320 over time. So maybe by by Voldemort me, I'll probably be like 310, 315. Yeah. Is that what you're going to keep it at in uh, September? Yeah, because the only meet I have to weigh in for is going to be um, – I'm doing the Abs Pro in August. And then um, – Are you still doing the cage? Yeah. But there, I don't think there's yeah. – Yeah, there's no, like, weighing or anything. It's, and it goes – No, like, no, 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 no. But you're, you're still going to want to flex when you're out there. Dude. That was my whole problem is, like – if I was going to try and restrict myself to be like, okay, I only yeah. am allowed, I'm only going to let my self do this so I don't fuck up my peak. I mean, dude, if if, if it's on and like people are yelling and shit, like when in Rome, like I would have fucked up my whole peak. <laughs> I think. It would have worked out good for you though. I mean, because it would have been with like your last heavy singles. Like for me, I have more time. It would have been a month out. So I probably would have been yeah. like a couple weeks early, but it would have been in sleeves too. And I would be like in wraps the whole time. You know what I mean? So like no, my I sleeves. Think, I, think, I think they said you could throw wraps on. Maybe I might be. Oh, wrong. did they? Yeah. I don't know. I just know that it's 11 weeks. I think it was like 11 weeks or something like that in between that and uh, the the clash, Clash of Titans, because it's like the end of April. Yeah. So you can yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's the, my, ours is the first week. Yeah. I'll be there, but yeah. So that that's why I was like, yeah, I'll do any. I'm I'm only squatting, so I wanted to yeah. pull, but they have a uh, someone else pulling, so I'll just squat. I won't go no, crazy either. Yeah, that's still gonna be dope though, dude. Just to kind of be yeah. in there, like absolutely. It's uh, everyone's we've all watched those YouTube. Yeah, we've all watched those YouTube videos like a million times. <laughs> that's yeah, it's definitely definitely cool. Oh yeah, yeah. for me, it's for the experience just to be in there. Yeah, the, the what was it? The Eisenhart. Oh, uh, yeah. That that looked like the coolest like powerlifting meet I've ever seen. Like even the the even the venue was like super like. Oh, uh, there was easy. Tell us all. Tell it's us about the whole deal, dude, from start to finish. Tell us about that whole. Yeah, experience. it's 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 not a powerlifting meet. It's like a a li it's like a, a push pull a showcase event. of strength. Yeah, it's you could wear. Like I, there was dudes wearing shirts like uh, equipped like the single ply shirts and stuff, and then there was guys with the elbow wraps, like the PR wraps and like actual the injured things you wear. Like the bench was touch and go. The deadlift you could wear a suit or straps, and like the lockouts. Like I mean, I don't know if you saw some of them. They're not like powerlifting standard, like you know. But um, it was really it was probably the best event I've ever been to. Like even with powerlifting meets involved, like just like the environment and. Um, the amount of people that were there was like easily like 600 and he sold a thousand tickets but they had like the biggest snowstorm they've had in 100 years so like it, it, it took away a lot from people showing up but it was easily like 500 to 600 people just watching and it was, was that like, kind of scary for you just like being there when there's like a blizzard going on outside basically where no, like the guy the, the guy sep he owns like he's third generation owner of the hotel and the uh -huh. hotel is it's all connected. The the hotel, the spa, and the gym 
is all connected. Like you, you have That's to go crazy. outside to walk through all the stuff. Like the restaurant, there's an under like underground tunnel. Um, the spa, like it's secluded. And then the gym is probably the best gym I've ever seen. Like easily, a, like probably up like I don't know how many millions of dollars worth of stuff. Like he has a bunch Oof. of stuff, and he has like an actual medical facility for like it's like the perfect like sanctuary for a strength sport athlete or any athlete. Like you could just go there, eat, sleep, and train, not worry about anything. You gotta you don't gotta drive anywhere. You don't gotta worry about nothing. Like you Ivan know? Drogo and uh, Rocky. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's completely it's like i've seen stuff i've never seen ever in there you can do you said they like this huh but well, you go shane oh, i was gonna say you said they treated like it was like they like love powerlifting over there though too they like love, it was like they love strength sports it's they treat it like like you're a celebrity like there yeah. was we were, we were on tv there it was like a bunch of different like tv channels we were on like they had these big cameras like I don't, like that's why I was a little confused. They did the live stream off Instagram because they had like mm -hmm. high tech, like professional cameras all over the place, and they had like news people there. But it was it was like overseas. The reason I like I love competing there more than here is because you get treated like a like a professional. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like meets here where like you show up, you weigh in. It's like okay, like over there, it's like there's more effort given. It's like they feed you, they give you like these hydration like recovery packs like bags um they do like a media aspect of it to get like every lifter highlighted whether you're you know top five in your weight class or like you're gonna win the whole thing or you're like just you're just showing up to have fun they treat mm -hmm. you with respect they give you like it's like from top to bottom it's it's a thousand times better than here and they have less money than people here get to get mm -hmm. to work so that's why i like competing overseas they're like they treat they treat you like you're a natural like athlete. You know what I mean? Natural? Huh? Natural? Actual. Actual. Oh. Oh like there's nothing natural about any of us. Actual, actual. <laughs> Not that. Dude, like Graham Hicks was there. There was some dude. I can't think of his name, but he's Mikhail? Giant, like he was Mikhail. Dude, like he was the like the biggest guy. Oh no, not not Mikhail. Oh, no, Shibley that's Connor. uh Lucas Pepper, he's like Czech Czech Republic's strongest man. He's bro, he he uh, benches like six sixty. He probably like six I seven. Don't know. He's, he's yeah, a he's, he's, mountain. Like he's massive. Raw like four thirty nine fifty. He doesn't compete. Like he does. Uh, he just does gym lifts kind of deal. But like he was. Wait, which I, I mean, I start, which one are we talking about? We might be confused, the, with you guys. There was one dude, he deadlifted like nine, whatever 430 is. So it's like 950 or something like that. Like he's. Oh, you're talking about uh hand something. Big. Yeah, he's, he's big. Yeah, he's pretty strong. He's like 6'2", but the, I don't know if you saw the one guy with the big beard. He's only like 23. He's like 6'8". Like he's a strong man. Like he actually. Oh, no, I didn't see that guy. Oh, oh, oh he's, he's massive. He's, he's mass, massive guy. He barely. Dude, the guy that. Four. Huh? The guy that won the whole thing was the little Simo dude. He was like yeah. 240 pounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he of course. Like, uh, Not. Was it 11 something? 11 05 or 11 five oh, I think it was like 505 or 506 or some, 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 shit. some shit. He tried it. He got one side off the ground and then the other he side gave didn't it. move. He technically got it. Like, they gave it to him. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Graham no, is there who like actually tried five oh five and like you know what I mean? That's crazy. Yeah. But, um Wait. I remember I I asked Derek about that afterward. I was like, because there was like a video of them like he was like giving them they were deadlifting together like after in the gym after or something like that. I was like, Did you get any pointers from that guy? He goes, Absolutely not. He's an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <And> I, <was laughs> like, I go, What do you mean? He goes, It's not a real deadlift. He'll tell you it's not a real deadlift. It's it's in his fingers. He uses the straps yeah. all the way down. Like he goes, He's a gym yeah. lifter. It's a gym lift. He knows that. Really that. I respect about him though. He says that like he says it's like barely on his fingertips. It's like all straps. Yeah. What? Right here. He he'll admit he'll admit it though. That's the one thing I respect. He doesn't try to justify like, oh it's a it's a super good lift. Like he'll say, like, yeah, it's a try to put lipstick on a pig, like he calls it what it is. Yeah, yeah. He'll tell you. So it's, he's 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 pretty cool. I mean he is it strong. Was, he benches like almost like mid fives, I think. Five fifty, I think. Yeah, he's, around he's, there. I mean, he's strong. Cute. Yeah. 
I just think he has an injury. That's why he hasn't competed because I don't think he could squat something with his back or some shit. That's crazy. So we did have a, a couple questions that came in from the Instagram question box. And so we, there was a total of two questions. It's, it's not a, not a flood of, of... It might be here for hours. Yeah. yeah. Well, th they are in-depth questions, but like the... The first question that came in was like, what's the mentality that you get into walking up to the bar for deadlifts on meet day? For right. everyone? Yeah. Yeah, let's start with Fern and we'll just work our way around. Are we uh, going like are we doing ascending order of of, of deadlift? So Fern, Yeah, we'll go we'll go in reverse. So Fern, me, <laughs> Pat, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. We can do it for squat too. We'll just go reverse if you want, Craig, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll work our way back up to it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just lock in like tunnel vision. I don't really think. As soon as I walk up to the bar, it's like there's nothing. It's like a clear mind. I don't know. You're calm as shit, dude. Like, you don't like get hype. You don't jump around. Like, you just kind of stand there and like you don't even make faces. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, after the fact, you don't even really kind of like, yeah, anything. You just like, Go do it, done. You know what I mean? You just chill in the bathroom, you're just chilling, you're sitting there, like you don't like make a fucking fuss about it. Like yeah, there's, there's a my siblings say that all the time, like they'll watch the meets. Like my brother went to the pro. And then my yeah. sister would say she's like, Why don't you yell, get hyped? And I'm like, that's like I don't think about that stuff. Like it, I, and I'm not gonna fake it. I can't like do a lift and start yelling. Like I just don't think about that stuff. It's not like I finished the lift and I'm like like, I'm just like, okay, like I, I have the goal in my mind. I got to squat this. And when I'm done and I do it, I'm just like, okay, next thing. Like, now we got to go bench. Like, that's the kind yeah. of time I have. Like, I guess I just don't, it's like, I don't enjoy what I'm doing. Like, at the moment, like, like afterwards, like, it's just like, all right, what's the ne next task? Which you is, just I guess, expect I yourself. Yeah. You just expect yourself to, like, get it. Like, it's like, that's kind of the thing. Like, you're not happy about it. Like, you expected that kind yeah, of it's like, a result. Yeah. It's so like you hit the goal and you're like, yes, I'm satisfied. Yeah. Relieved, yeah. relieved it didn't go the other way. That's usually how yeah. I feel. I get it. I'm like, whew. <laughs> yeah. Finish the lift and you just look up to the three reds and you're like, fuck, I thought I had it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. That's every time. <laughs> yeah, the, only, the only time was the pro I got pissed off just because after the 942, like, I felt like I had maybe 10 more pounds, like I would have won like five, nine, or like 15, like nine, 59, but my whole hand was completely ripped open. It was just leaking blood. Mm -hmm. And Greeno was like, do you want to go up? I'm like, I don't think I can. Like we could put it in there. I'll, I'll put my hands on it, but I don't think it's coming up. Like it'll come off the ground. I'm just going to slide out my hands. Have you tried? Yeah, I remember. It? Huh? Have you tried to hook it? Here and there, but like, I'd need like an actual like off season. Cause I just been like, like, yeah. It's like I, I don't like fucking around. Like the little time I fuck around is usually when I have a lot of time in between meets. So yeah. after April, I'll probably like try to get hooked down. But even hook, I'm not a big fan because it's like unreliable. Yeah, it's sure. a good plan B though. If you're if everything else is ripped up, just rip the rest yeah. up. You know. Yeah. Like, uh, I saw a meet once where there was like an ex marine was deadlifting and he tore his bicep on his second attempt. Mm, I know what you mean. You're talking about. And yeah. he just flipped his his uh his grip and then pulled his third. Oh, I think it was like eight hundred. Oh shit! I couldn't do that. I've, I've never switched my grip. I can't even do double overhand. No people that people that finish deadlifts like that after they tear their bicep, like they just they're standing with it and it just goes. Boop, and like, just, they still hold it and then put it down. Didn't, didn't that happen to Christy? Didn't Christy Hawkins pull tore her bicep but still held and got the lift? But then it was like like this, yeah. Yeah, it, it happened to her. It happened to the Marine guy that Pat's talking about. It happened to um, Brian Carroll. Mm, oh, who, who's the one that had that documentary? The, the multiply guy. Oh, uh, oh Matt Manuth. Matt Manuth. Yeah. Matt Manuth. Yeah. This was crazy, too, because I was like to stay in the meet. That was such a stretch, like, it was like a, a WPO meet, and it was like, he missed his opening squat, he got his second squat, he missed his third squat. He got his last bench, and he got his, like, his last deadlift. Like, it was like a four for nine meet, or something, three for nine meet, maybe, but it was, like, so stressful just to even get an attempt in. But, like, when he did, like, it was, like, 
I don't know, you're like super fired up because it was like that, like extremely bad or like really good. I think it's like it's just consistent and raw. Like missing your opener, right? Not off of like whatever, and then still going up, like missing your second and going up. That's so, wild. Craig? Such a gamble. Yeah. Like yeah, Andrew, Andrew did that with his bench. Like, he missed it, went up, missed his second, and still went up. And I'm like, that's well, it's a lot of balls. Yeah, going up on missing your first two and then going up on your third for 10.25. Big kahuna. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Hail Mary, though. Sure. Let's be honest. You just need a little extra weight to, to push you down yeah. to deck. Yeah. yeah. That takes balls, though. That takes a lot yeah. of balls. You'd be like, fuck it. I came, like, I came here for something. Like, I'm going to do it regardless. Yeah I've, I've, yeah, I've never been able to, like, if I miss something, I've never been able to, like, go up. Like, I could have, yeah. like, I probably, like, Shane can call bullshit on me for this. Um, on At the Pro, I probably could have pulled 804, but, like, I needed the 777. Like, yeah. I Sorry, I could have locked out, quote-unquote, 804. Whether or not it would have passed, probably not. But... To the no, standard that they were looking for, like, you, they wouldn't have... That was a thing. Like I, it was such a like, such a stupid call as far as like soft knee this that or what. It's like at a certain point, like you're working against your body leverages at that point, or you know yeah. what I mean. Or if the opener didn't even look like that, why are you going to question about the second? Because it looked identical. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I will say this, bro. Both of those second and thirds, they move like openers. Still seven seventy. So yeah, you have eight hundred four in you. Yeah, that's 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 going down in April. Um, if if you want to see some of the cards I have on the table, uh, to to prepare yourself in April to to lose to me, you know, it's your first sleeve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, first ever sleeved me, Dana. Uh, I was gonna do the Pioneer Open on the beach in sleeves. Well, that's uh, happening again. I don't know. Oh no no last year last year. Oh last year I got you. But uh, I had a a, a a I just got into the the um squat shoes and I didn't know there was a difference and I was doing sleeves and the coach I had for like two or three months um RPE based training and I'm too stupid to follow RPE at all and I, I had I think it was like 815 on the bar and I took it for a double and something popped on the first rep but it was a pause rep and I locked it out and I was like you know what? fuck it I, I I already got it so I might as well squat it again and I got the second rep and then the next day, it took me like 30 minutes to roll out of my car to walk into work. And my boss was like, you good? We 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 started betting on how long it would take you to get out of here. <laughs> I, was I, like, I thought you did it for a triple. <laughs> I thought I thought it was two, and then I looked back at the video, and it was for doubles. It was like 8.15 for doubles, and then six something for doubles. It was like the first rep paused. Um, um, but oh, I, I just... I have feelings about RPE based training. I'm What's a percentages guy. I like percentages. I'm the same. Yeah, it's I'm easy. To do RPE. You feel, if you feel good, go up five pounds. That's it's, it's easy. You know, pull back five pounds off that percent. Like I feel like that's easy enough. There's your there's your variance. There's your how you feel like, during the day. Five or ten pounds. Nine. Five or ten pounds. That's all I can like. RPE is just so hard to like estimate, and I'm not gonna spend doing fucking sets trying to find the right RPE every time. It's just hard to be honest with yourself, you know? It's like when you're doing RPE, you're thinking too much. You're like, how did that feel? And then and you start second-guessing yourself. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said most people overshoot anyways. They were like, it was supposed to be a 7, but it was a 7.5 or 8. I'm like, I don't know. It's just, it just moves the weight. It's like, it's such a, a simple thing we're doing. It's just up and down with weights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, everything's an RPE 7 until they miss a rep. Oh, absolutely. Or a misgroove. It's a misgroove. <laughs> it's a seven or a misgroove. Uh, I, I, I just, I hate it so much because it's like, it's a catch-22. If the lifter does really well with it, the coach is a genius. But if the lifter, like, sucks and, and doesn't, then he didn't understand RPE. So it's like... Yeah. <laughs> they get insurance policy for them. They're, they're not wrong either way. <laughs> yeah. You can turn your coach into an underwriter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> but like like you were saying before you walk up to the deadlift bar and you're, you're you just 
clear head and, and if you're doing rpe you're like all right how is this gonna you, you've got so, too many thoughts in your head oh, yeah. i love i love just give me a number and yeah do it like you know what i mean like i don't want to be like oh go off of um do an rp nine single today you know what i mean it's like look, i'm supposed you're gonna to want to push it you know what i mean if i don't have that yeah that restriction like, rp nine gonna, uh, is a ten it's pretty much yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah you're maxing out <laughs> yeah yeah anything above any single that's an rpe that yeah that means that you're gonna go and you're gonna hit a, at least a 10 pound pr that's a grinder you just happen to miss groove it yeah exactly call, call it a seven and a half bro i love the halves like where do you even get that number from? what's that shit i know i don't understand that either well you have fucked up it was half easy it was half easy you'll see some people go from the rpe and then they'll start getting programmed in percents and then like they'll post on their instagram well this was a three by three out of seven i was like no no yeah <laughs> you're not using rpe anymore get out of it <laughs> <You're> a- <laughs> Like, does does anyone who totals over two k use RPEs? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus just walks in the gym, whatever the fuck he wants to do that day. And yeah, just that walks 885 <laughs> that's crazy. not that's not program. That's not program. Oh, well, coach will program that. That's not an off season, just a lift. He's like four weeks out. Yeah, yeah, that means yeah. coming up. Yeah, Sheffield's like four weeks out, which is crazy because I feel like the Sheffield just happened last, like not so long ago. But yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, he's look, he's looking solid. I mean, his deadlift was I, I was talking to him the other day. Like his deadlift was the only thing because of the grip, but like even that's clicking now. He fixed like, that, bro. Nine yeah, twenty-five, so, no problem. Even if he's holding over nine, that easy silly. now. With he he pulled the world was in nine twenty-five and held it, and I was yeah, I was, and that was the last thing he needed to complete himself was just that grip issue because the strength is there. So now I think he's going to take Ray's squat record. I think he'll take that. I don't think so. I think he's, I think he's, I think he's another, at least another year in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Not this at least another year. 1050 though. 1050 is there. Oh yeah. I definitely oh, yeah. think 1050. But it's yeah. like, he's, he's younger than all of us too. It's like, I always used to go in and be like, at least I've got the, the age factor on everyone. And then Jesus comes in. And it's like, oh, let's just take this this record from a thirty six year old at twenty three, yeah. and then everyone's like, fuck, what 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 left is there? And he's not. I mean, look at Derek. Derek just turned twenty four. Then you got that South African guy, um, which is in Colton or whatever. Like he's like twenty three. Yeah, dude, he is slapped on hard. I was just talking to somebody about that the other day. Like, like twenty three, dude. Nine fifty deadlift. That's not a kabuki bar. That's just a normal. He squats over nine. He's a rap guy. Yeah. He squats over nine. And nine he... But his sleeve squat is tough. He just did three sets of eight with like 630, which is cool. like kind of right around what I do. I've done five sets of eight with 645. You know what I mean? So he's got to be right around like a 900-pound sleeve squat at this point. I think he'll know? take Yuri's record in wraps. And I think – He's close, isn't he? I've yeah, seen how, Shane how show me how he's way? close. He's like 40 pounds away. 2320, I think, is what he told yeah. And then, he's two forty two, right. isn't he? Two forty two. The thing he's a string bean. <laughs> and no, yeah, I think he, I think he's a ginger too, boys. Like a light ginger. <laughs> That's I mean, even worse. He's, he's strong as total. Uh, the guy from New Zealand. Uh, he's coming up. Theo, Theo Maddox, something like that's his name. Theo. Yes, yes. I see yeah. him videos. He's, he's a bunch of. He's he's like a little slept on too. He's, he's yeah, really ten fifty. Huh. He did a ten fifty with straps on. Figure Easy. Eight. He's pulled over nine in comp. Like he totaled yeah. twenty two, I think, in sleeves. He's not a rap guy either. He's a sleeve guy. But yeah, I, I've heard he's out. huge. I heard he's like a like a, a tall guy, like six five. He's taller than me. People think I'm tall, dude. I'm six two, six yeah. two and a half. Like that guy's really really tall. Yeah, he's a monster. Nine inches. It's so many. It's so many of these fucking younger kids just coming in, and you're like, Jesus Christ. Yo, that's how I feel every day when I look on Instagram. I'm like, fuck, yeah, I'm, 30. We're I'm 35, out, and I'm looking at these 22-year-olds, and they're, like, yeah. pulling over nine. I'm like, fuck, I just need to get seven. Well, you, what you could say is a lot of people are pulling a lot, but they're not squatting a lot. That's the one thing that's kind of declining is you're seeing a lot of big pulls, but you're not seeing a lot of big squatters. It's it's like I mean, no, it's, people are squatting over nine. It's just it's not that many. Troy, did you send me the other day? Uh, JP Carroll. He posted something yeah. about that. Like, dude, he's a fun. I don't know if you guys follow that guy. Like, 
he's like the grumpy grandpa of powerlifting right now, where he's like he I trained in like post. the Lily Bridge time, you know what I mean? Like I say yeah. that was like ten years ago, but he was like big like ten years ago, and like now he's like you know he's just he's he's doing what he still can. He still benches like mid fives. I don't think I don't know if he pulls or uh, squats anymore, but he just fucking rags on powerlifting. He's like <laughs> he. Uh, <laughs> He just he just goes in on like people just like I don't know just being nerds about it you know what I mean like that's yeah. that's a, he just calls people nerds <laughs> like you know what I mean? uh, his his uh blog posts on Elite FTS back in the day those were like mint like lifting for yeah power rather than powerlifting he he called out girls who powerlift and got a bunch of shit for that too the uh, that's a brand down in Florida that's where it started yeah. I, I remember I called him out once because he was um he was going back and forth with my coach at the time, uh, Greg Pinar, and I was like, you know what, JP, shut up. I'm not totaling you in five years. I did it in four, but he like disappeared off the face of the earth for a while. He moved to Texas. Yeah. What was it E mm. E T X E X or E X T C or something? E X T C or something, I think it is. Who yeah. knows what that means? Nobody. East Texas Barbell <laughs> Club, maybe? <laughs> Knows. Shane's on it. What's 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 your take, Shane, on that? We keep, we kind of like fall off track. <laughs> <laughs> we fall no. off track. You put you put. No, that's good. That's that's what you call filler content for two questions. Um, I feel like <laughs> I, used really, I used to get really hyped. Like I'd have like I get like smacked in the face, or I'd rip ammonia, or I try and like like. Get like you know you're like emotional almost like you're thinking about like you know fucked up stuff from your life or something like that and then that works sometimes but then that doesn't work sometimes and i was talking to my buddy about this where like i kind of you go like an ebbs and flows where it's like like your bench my bench and my squat were doing really good for like a bunch of meets and then my deadlifts like i would miss my third deadlift like three meets in a row or something like that and then now my deadlifts are going really good and like my bench has been kind of hurt and i'm stuck on I'm stuck on the same two numbers basically for the last two meets. And so it's kind of like it's a di- different approaches I feel like affect that kind of stuff. So like now it's like I want to get like hyped up and like I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit and like, you know, I'll sniff some ammonia, but I, I didn't take a single smack this last meet. And then as soon as like, you know, like when you clear the threshold, like I like, I feel like I just heard the term bullpen. Like that's what they've been calling it. We're like yeah. they corral the, the lifters yeah. just by the chalk bowl, <laughs> or like the, the 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 chairs to wrap your knees and stuff. Like they're calling it the bullpen. So it's like there's like a little bit of a wall with like the the you know the screen or the lights or whatever's here, and then like the the banner for the meet. So you kind of walk out that thing. As soon as I clear that, it's like all right, calm down, calm down, calm down. Yeah. Think. And for me, like I was, dude, I was texting you boys, like and Craig knew too because I was training with him. I was shitting my pants about my deadlift just as far as like I missed that last heavy pull because it got in front of me and like that bar is so finicky, bro. Like as far as like you either slack it all, you don't. And like you can overthink it too. And like I definitely started overthinking it. And um, so like for me, it was just like get hyped up as far as just like get, get, you know, just, you know, fire it up. And then uh, once I get out there, I was like, I just had to calm down, think, but I didn't have to like overthink. Like, it was just like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And then go like, I don't want to spend extra time set my hands. It was like, when everything's just set, grip, rip. And, you know, that's how you do it. I mean, you just bend over and basically snap the shit like, like it's a fucking a hot towel or something. You know what I mean? And I like to think of it it's like also, like you put in all the work, like the 12, 16 weeks, whatever long people prep for. Mm-hmm. So like, you kind of just all the work's been done, so it's like you're there already. There's no need to kind of like uh, overthink it too much, you know. No, hundred percent. Like, like lifts, like it's it's cool to see people get hyped. I mean, it's entertaining for some. Like getting seeing people get smacked or yell, like some of it's entertaining. But I don't think people realize like that burns a lot of energy. Like all that yeah, adrenaline, is, like up here, and then you have to come down a little bit to walk to the bar. It's like it's too much up and yeah. down. It just if For you sure. just kind of like it's like controlled chaos. It's like more like you're con- like I listen to classical music before a deadlift. I don't listen to no nothing that will get my heart rate up. I like listening to yeah. something that clears my mind. So when I walk up to the bar, it's like all the work I've done for twelve weeks, sixteen weeks. It's le- it's led up to this part. So there's no need for me to kind of like pretty much even stress about it because it's like studying for a test. Like you know you yeah. know the answers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a clean way to look at it. Huh? I feel like I. 
I've been it, like so like after this beat, like I feel like I'm very much like I need to do like you know like a, all right, yeah. chill for bench, chill for deadlift, but squat is still one where I got to be pretty fucking fired up. Like I mean, I'm not. I'm not walking shit out, so I don't really have to go anywhere. I just have to stand up real quick, you know what I mean? So I feel like that's that's what I can still I still gotta be pretty jazz, you know, fired up for just to pick it and stuff. But yeah, um, who knows, maybe that'll change in the next little bit too, and then I'll have There's to go back to being fired that. up for yeah. I, find I mean that I have to listen to different music depending on which lift I'm doing. Like yeah, like people make fun of me for my squat music where it has to be like super emotional, like you're gonna cry listening to this like i've the the owners of my you had the billy eilish the oh billy yeah eilish. yeah what was i made for <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that was what you pulled to too right that was your last episode. uh no i i pulled to um stronger than the whiskey by poor man's poison but like it, it, oh, it's yeah, weird yeah. like i have to for for bench i have to have the uh like i'm the greatest of all time like otep like heavy metal going on talking about killing people because i'm better than them and then going into deadlifts it's like dueling banjos like fucking your cousin and stuff like it's it's really yeah. weird but it's yeah like you got to be in a different mental space for each of them like keep whatever them works for you yeah you have to tap into whatever whatever gets you going you know that's why like like for people to yell and get hyped up if that's what you have to do like you got to do what you got to do you got to just tap into whatever you need yeah especially with the week we're doing it's you gotta like you know tap into something fucked up you know or whatever just to do what you gotta do whatever's gonna get you to get under it man yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day right it's like basically with squats it's cool because like you walk out and then you see like 50 phones and you're like yes they're all here to me i'm gonna show them that i'm that motherfucker but like deadlifts de <laughs> i do i do this thing like i, I remember seeing ray ray williams do kind of like a walking back and forth right in front of the um the bar and then or, was it was it ray or benedict no, Magnus? he did that it was ray it well, was they, ray they both did, yeah. yeah but like i, I kind of incorporated that into it and like in my head i i like picture myself as darth maul in in the first star wars movie and like yeah. the bar is qui-gon jinn qui-gon jinn i'm about to kill him so it's like like completely the method acting boys like exactly. you'll watch my deadlifts and i'm i'm doing a little pace back and forth and then and then like you know what the the scene where they're in the the generator and the red screen pops up and, and qui-gon jinn just sits sits calmly and and darth maul is just like i'm gonna kill you and yeah then ready to whoop that ass. yeah it's it's like i'm pacing back and forth gotta be the villain gotta be the murderer you know yeah it's like, right, Craig, how you feeling? Honestly, I'm dead and tired, and I'm just hoping my grip just stays. <laughs> I just need to just hit my opener, so at least get my total, so I don't bomb out. It's basically my mentality. And then the next two, let's let's go shoot, try to get a PR. Honestly, that's kind of like tell, my mentality. Your dad's been telling the story of working a lot on dads. I've just noticed that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's feeling good. It's getting there. Just got to be. Just consistency is the only thing with me in pools. Once I get the consistency, it's with it. I'm hoping for a PR. Big PR is the goal at those. So you got the leg power. There's no, no denying that. Yeah, especially on that Kabuki bar. Once I get it down, I feel it's now. I can see it's gonna be a cheater bar. Yeah, honestly, yeah. but I like it. But I found that the kabuki is better for sumo pullers than it is for Absolutely. conventional pullers. And it's like yeah. the stiffer the bar, the better it is for conventional pullers. I like, like really. Have you guys ever pulled on the rope that far? Yeah, we have one. Yeah. On a power bar, not on a deadlift bar. It's a little, the yeah, rope has a deadlift bar and it's, it has a little flex to it, but not as much. Mm. And I love it. Like it's, it's the that one with the tape we have, Craig, the old one. Oh, that's a rope. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do like I that. Like, I like yeah. that bar. Yeah. I don't like Texas too much. The Kabuki, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of either. I don't like all that bend for like for conventional. Because when I pull sumo, obviously it's great. But by the time you pull that slack, you're almost like three quarters of the way there. Especially when yeah. You're <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's a it's a good uh, benefit, but like for conventional, I just I'm not a big fan. Yeah. I rather pull like on a on a rope, or I do like pulling on a on a power bar. Yeah. Conventional. I've tried it sumo. It, it, it sucks. I don't like it. Sumo's like it's it's all about getting into that starting position, and the the more slack that you can pull out of the bar, the the better starting pos position you can get into. So it's like the all that whip in the kabuki just allows you to get into a better starting position. But with conventional, it's all about the initial pop off the floor. 
So, and you lose a lot of that with the with the kabuki. So it's like we should get rid of the kabuki. Somebody. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I, I pull on whatever <laughs> they use. Like if they ask, if they like, they're pulling on this. Um, they're using the Cerberus for Ireland. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what. What does that like. bar feel like? I don't even know what that would be. I've heard that it's stiff. It's almost like a power bar, but it Ooh, has some uh, gifts, like the rogue I just explained. But the knurling is really aggressive, like a brand new kabuki, where it's gonna just fuck up your hand. So mm, I'm gonna maybe uh, buy one because I don't know. Like I like using, I like using what they're gonna use. Like, so yeah. So do you, do you buy try, the bar, or are you just gonna try to mimic? I'm gonna try. I, so I'm gonna try to buy it because I think they're cheap. They're not like seven, eight, a thousand bucks like kabuki. Yeah, yeah. I think they're like four hundred. I think. Oh, okay. So, so I'm gonna try to try to maybe buy one, but um, I've heard it's good. Like I mean, just Justin Zotto uses it, mm. yeah, and he says it's really good. But the the Nerlens is really aggressive. Bro, he is a sandbagging motherfucker. He messaged <laughs> me the other day, and he's like, <laughs> I, I posted one of my my rap sets, and he messages me the other day, and he's like, man. I wish I was doing that kind of weight right now. He's like, I can, I can, I can barely do six hundred. And I go, what happened? He told me he had like some kind of adductor groin injury or something. And uh, I was like, that's crazy, dude. Like, be careful and you know, just like rest up and you'll you'll know your body and stuff. And then because he's doing April too, but he's doing the meet with Fern as a tune-up meet. You know what I mean? And then he's doing uh, ghost class, no? Yeah, he is doing in wraps. I thought yeah. he was doing sleeves. He's doing it in rap. So that's going to be cool. So, like, I want to squat more than he does. You know what I mean? So, it's going to be very cool. That's a good yeah, back Yeah, it'll be enforcement. very good. He, he's really yeah. good in raps. And I, I, you know, I, I, my first time using him in years. So, it'll be very fun. Um, and we kind of want to be around the same number wise. So, I mean, he'll, he probably has a better gauge on what that is versus what I do. But, um, but anyway, so he's telling me that. And then, like, the next day, he posts, like, he did, like, 770. 782 for a double, right? For a double, and I was like, "All right, liar! Like you're, you're good." And he's just like, "Oh, it felt good today, man." And then the next week, he like posts that eight oh four, eight oh five tempo, yeah. eight oh for a crazy yeah, tempo. tempo. Pause. But the the eight oh five wasn't on program. He told me it was like program something he like supposed to do six sixty. Yeah, six six. Are you serious? Yeah, and he just he said, "Fuck it." <laughs> he's like the most Canadian Canadian guy out there. Like super <laughs> nice, <laughs> super kind. Oh, he's like, my boy. Yeah, yeah like. He's a this fucking monster of a guy, huge as shit, strong as shit, but he's like so nice, and he's really like, like humble. You know what I mean? Like he's like the most mm-hmm. Canadian, Canadian guy. Like he invited me to his house for the weekend off of Instagram. We talked for like a couple days off of Instagram, and he just yeah, whenever you want, come through. Yeah. Oh like, damn! Like you don't even know me. Like that's a homie. Yeah, yeah. I, I ended up driving up there to hang out with him. He was great. Him and his his wife Helen. They're like they were they were great. I was like, this is what Canadians are like. They're really nice. Yeah, you and uh, Joe went up there too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. last June. We went yeah. up. Because he's friends with him off of uh, Instagram, and they play Fortnite. They play That's Fortnite. so funny. <laughs> <laughs> they play Fortnite together, yeah. They got a little group going on. It sounds like fun, though. But, yeah, they, but he's a really nice guy. He's I talked to him a, g- a couple times a week, and he's, a, he's, really, he's really nice. Those are people like you're like glad to meet like, through this whole thing, 100%. you know what I mean? Like they're definitely uh there's 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 a lot of baddies in there, but there's there's some gems too. You meet some yeah. good people. Like you you're like powerlifting has a lot of shitheads, but then you meet people like Justin or you guys, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like even like this dude, like uh-huh. we all made, I mean like Fern lives down here now, but like he was in a different state, like Pat's in a different state, like me and Craig are down here, but you know, we all get to be boys because we met one time and then we just chit chat a bunch. So we just yeah. see each other and meet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or we, we drive through a train with each other or whatever. We trained out so. one time because of Craig. Because I was messaging Craig. Yeah. 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 Dude, and that's, what, and that's when I got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was when I got hurt. 870 dub, though, boys. 870 yeah. dub. Almost blocked out. Yeah, big double, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's crazy, though. It's crazy. Like, you see, you have a lot of. Shitheads, you're like, damn, powerlifting kind of sucks. And then you meet people that you're like, damn, like, powerlifting is actually good. It's just those select few that are just shitty. So you got to focus on the good stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, the you all get laid down. Uh, the loudest ones. Yeah. I still think there's more good people than there are shitheads. I just like the shitheads get more. Yeah, yeah. You're right. More popular. Yeah. Well, like Shane said, they're louder. They're just, you know. Just waiting for Goob to filter them out. 
Yeah. You, you, you sent me that thing. Dude, I thought we were just like, <laughs> you're, you're, he like liked one of Pat's pictures and he commented on it or something. And he's like, this is the scariest comment I've ever gotten. Just interacting with this guy. It's like a shark. You don't know well, if he's going to bite you or not. <laughs> Joe sent me a um a setup for uh dumbbell floor press because I can't hip thrust 150s up. And it's like it, he sent me the setup and it was it was by goob. And I kind of like instead of having two people do it, um I've got no no friends at my gym, so I just kind of yeet the, the dumbbells off of a bench oh, on the chest. Boys. And uh, I was like, I am not tagging goob in this. And then a bunch of people tagged goob in it, and goob was like very cool. And I was like, Oh, this is <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> That that key and peel meme where he's just sweating and just show. looking <laughs> over like this. So to get one of those welcome to the show introductions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick <laughs> McGuire. Patrick McGuire. Yeah, just, said, just this like girl was pretty at, behind him. You got the uh like called one person pretty this one time and it was not appreciated. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Done for. And then the screenshot is wow, your squat was pretty. <laughs> Funny. It's terrifying. What was uh, the second question? What was the other question they asked? Uh, the second question was uh, percent based versus RPE based. I slipped oh, in. We, already, we just had we already discussed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you thought you, you had a thing that we sidebarred the whole time. You said you inceptioned us. I did. I did. I am the social engineer of this this expedition into the heads of meat. Fern, uh, what's your? Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knows. What's your favorite lift of the three? Right now, it's probably squat. Really? Yeah, now it's my favorite. Yeah, just because it's it surprised me at the pro. Like me and Greeno planned for 881, and even that I thought was like because I mean Shane was there. Well, you were there, Craig, right? When I squatted it at a Barbell Barbell, and I'm like, this is gonna be my third. It'll be a little hard. But fuck it. Well, this is what I want. And then when it was there, when it was my second. I, I was like, there's no way this was a 81. It felt light. So then I wanted to go, he, I wanted to go something over nine, but I had 909 in my head for some weird reason. So I was like, load 909. I probably should have done 915, but I was like, load 909. And then when I got that, I, when I picked it and I went, you know, down and up, I was like, oh shit, like this, this is great. So I was like the one lift that I'm like really happy throughout the day. Cause even the 942, it wasn't like my favorite lift. The 909 has been my favorite lift of the whole year. I kind of feel like really? um, yeah. when when you you got to have someone who like has been following along with your training and knows your numbers, and knows how you are on meet day and just yeah. you show up and whatever is on the bar, you just lift it and just yeah. trust that person's going to put whatever you have and has your best interest at mind on the bar. That, that's what I did with Shane at, at the pro and I had no idea what I was benching. You just you just yeeted things at me. It. I mean, it opened you light too. I mean, it was like five fifty. Like you ended up jumping up basically like seventy six hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. We went from he did five ninety five. He didn't even do six hundred until his third. Yeah. Well, I, I missed five seventy five in training, like three weeks out. Yeah. It's good to have someone you trust just to see what you're not seeing. It is good. Yeah. Because I had a, uh, I almost didn't do the pro because I have such a shitty meet in Poland. I went like five for nine, I think, or four for nine. I like, forgot about that. Yeah, like, I could, <laughs> it was, like, three or four weeks prior, and, like, I got my opener, and I wanted to squat 881 there, but then, like, my second attempt, I went 865, and, like, my foot slipped almost, so, you know, I took, retook it, barely got it, and then I only got two attempts on bench, and then I only got my opener on deads, so I had, like, a shitty meat, so I was telling Green, I'm like, maybe we'll just scrap the pro and just kind of save up, like, just build and go into it. He's like, I think you could do it. He's like, if you don't, if you want to do it, it's whatever you want. But I think you could do it. And it was like, for like two weeks, we were like going back and forth. Like every other training session, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do it. And then the one, the session that made me say, "Fuck it, I'm doing it," was the 881 squat with you. I was like, all right, yeah. I just clicked. I'm like, let's go. Because I filled my last pull too. I filled it was like 910 or 915 at perfect. Yeah, I remember you told me that, and you pulled yeah. fucking nine that same day after you did 881. Yeah, yeah. I gotta get easy because yeah. he, he drives over three hours cross state in the morning. He comes over, he self reps the whole time. So he probably did four self reps before he even got to that 880. Oh, self wrapped, and then he does it. 
smokes it. We did. He did eight forty eight the week before. So like it was it wasn't a big jump, but like it was a PR. So I was just like, all right, boys. And then literally right afterward, he just goes to deadlift. He's like, and I, I was you know doing pulls too. And he's like, hey, is it cool if I do like he, he did eight fifteen? He's like, hey, is it cool if I do nine on nine hundred real quick? I was like, yeah. And so like he literally he does. Yeah. 45 he warms up like damn squats the warm up the warm up squat where he does 45 700 815 and then just jumps to whatever so he does three warm-ups and then he just jumps right to 909 so he did that in the 880 within maybe like a 30 minute span of each other it was a very big flex like at that point i was like okay homeboy's gonna, he's gonna yeah that's, i said the weekend. same thing i was like jesus <laughs> <laughs> No, Jesus is in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely like a huge uh, confidence boost. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go do this thing. So I was like, mm-hmm. it was it was good. I, it was good that he kind of pushed me to do it because I really didn't want to. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there to have a mediocre meet. I'm like, I don't compete to do shit. So but then I had the best meet I've ever had was there. Yeah. So it's like uh, dude, it worked you know, out. having a handler, a good handler. It's almost like a cheat code. So I'm going to tell you that you're being stupid when you start doubting yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's good. It was, he was a good fit to work with. I mean, it was, it's great. It's been going great so far. Just like everything, not just the programming, but just like the talks and the communications there. Everything's pretty good. Is he going to your meet for uh, in a couple of weeks? Not to Canada. I think he's going to be at the animal. I think he's going to be in Ohio. I'm not sure. April, he's competing himself at Ghost Clash. Oh, he's doing Ghost Clash? And then Damn, I, I forgot about that. And then there's another yeah. he said he has to go to like a week later or two weeks later. So then he's like, he, he was like, he's going to try to finagle to go uh, to go to Ireland. But he said, if not, he'll go there in August. Are you going to class? Are you handling him? I don't know who's handling him, but I have someone doing it the amateur day. So I'll be, I'll be down there. I'll, oh, probably okay. stay, I'll probably stay overnight. We just booked our game. hotels earlier this week, dude. They're steep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Doing hotel or Airbnb? Hotel. My hotel. It was too expensive to do B and B. Really? Yeah. Right. And it's just. I think you should move it. I don't think it should be down there because it's like it's so much money for the lifters. Especially and it's and, and it's just so congested in there. The fucking traffic sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's expensive out there everywhere. Just going out to eat is expensive, so it's just like because yeah. then you spend the travel. Like for people who are out of state or some out of the country, you got the flight, the hotel, then you got to pay for the meat itself, the registration, then you got to pay for the, the federation membership. Yeah, and then we're untested. You got to buy a bunch of shit for the prep itself, and then. And then the food when you get here and then the drinking, if you're going to drink, it's like, it's easily like a couple grand, you know, like, easy. I'd rather, I'd rather just go to Mexico, to Cancun, go on a resort or some shit. Like, what you know? <laughs> yeah. Bro, at that point, I'll just do a local meet, just collect money at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Like, change it. No low five. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm trying to make another five here in 13 weeks, boys. There you That's go. the only reason I'm putting the wraps on. Yeah, there you go. It's nice. It's I mean, it's it's nice traveling and seeing the people you don't usually see. Yeah. But it's just it's just financially sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really like for the people, majority that aren't really going to win the money. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. We just they, donated money. Just donated. Yeah, at that you're, point. You're, you're, you're funding like the John Hack prize pool. Yeah. <laughs> You know? And then it's like, oh, congrats! You had the uh, the heaviest total. Here's two hundred bucks. I hope it makes a dent. The America Pro was a hundred. The oh. biggest, yeah, hundred. Hundred. <laughs> you can't even go to the bar with that. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. It was like a world record was a hundred bucks, and then um, biggest total was a hundred bucks. They forget a zero. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> Didn't they have to Venmo you? Like it was like you got it like weeks later or something. No, no, they were with the American Pro. They were quick. Uh, they were he quick. cash out. The cash out me like, I think it was like Tuesday after the meet. It was like a couple of days. Okay. It was quick, really quick. And a message me was like, "Hey, what's your cash app?" And like five minutes later, it was in my. It was in there. So they're not. They don't take long to pay you. Okay, well that's good then. Yeah, guys, I've heard of meets where like you compete and you don't get. 
a lot of people don't get paid till months and months later. And that's yeah, no one wants to deal with that, dude. No, Not every me can have a, a direct deposit into the G string with the five grand. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to jump into one of those meets next year. I I don't have any of those meets up here. Like I have to go down to at least like here. Pennsylvania until they start having those meets. You gotta move down here. Anyone need a uh, mm -hmm. resident for their basement? I don't have. We don't have basements in Florida. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the first thing you gotta learn. No, no basements in Florida. <laughs> Anything this house is elevated for the flood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyone need a professional dog walker or cat, uh, cat petter? A cat petter. We'll send yeah, feed pigs for residents. Yeah. I think I think you're just gonna have to sell your body, bro. I think you're just gonna yeah, have to like really really commit. With this economy, it's it's like every day it's something. You got no choice. <laughs> People, like just to be a content creator on Foot Finder, it's like four ninety nine a month. And I'm like, hmm. Finder. <laughs> you know I've looked it up but just because I know the numbers. I'm a math guy. I'm a numbers guy. I'm getting logistics. <laughs> Every time I post a, a, a YouTube thumbnail, people are like, you should make an OnlyFans, though. And I'm like, no. No. Maybe. No. Tell me, tell me more. Tell me more. A couple hundred bucks. A couple hundred bucks. You can, I can help you uh, get you started. I'll I'll send my underwear to whoever need, wants it for a thousand bucks. I gotta get my How back. How bad do you want this dream, bro? Uh, Joe was saying to drop everything and move to like Vegas. I was like, that's even more expensive. <laughs> I don't want to live there. Do they have state tax over there? I don't know if they have state tax over there. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I wouldn't think so. I would think they do have state tax. It's expensive. Vegas is nice. It's just pricey, but they have good food. I think the strip bars they're allowed to go topless, but not show their buttholes or something like that. Well, brothels are legal there. Yeah, brothels yeah. are legal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, damn, we should all go do one of those uh, fucking fighter foot instead of going out. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I there was there's some guy in the gym who tried to go to fighter quit and got kicked out of every gym in Vegas in like a month. Who? Ah, uh, just one of the multiply guys who used to go to my gym. I want to go to Dragon's Lair. That looks like a pretty dope. Yeah, place. me too. It's a sick gym. I feel like it's like MI40 though, where there's like a huge drop in. Like you have to. to that's go what I think. Like that's what Flex like Joe that. or Flex Lewis on that gym. Yeah, yeah. Flex Lewis. Yeah. It's like I, I saw Lean Beef Patty do a video there, and I'm like, oh, that's got to have a massive drop in fee. Like, uh, was it Zoo Culture? <laughs> is like 150 <laughs> bucks or something. A was drop in? Like, like a day pass? Day pass. A day pass. I know it's like some stupid, outrageous. I think it's 150 or not, but like. I think even twenty bucks is just too much. Yeah, yeah. Gyms is like yeah. first time is free, second is ten bucks or something like that. Huh? My gym is first time is free, second time is like ten bucks. Yeah. Also, like twenty is like the limit. Twenty for me is like, oh shit! Like, all right, I'm not paying more than this, but fifty, like a hundred bucks, fifty bucks for a day pass, like that's crazy. a couple hours. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, it was like big. Uh, Big Z was saying he wanted to go to everyone's gym just to lift before the Voldemort meet. And um, I was like, I don't think you want to go to my gym because the, at any given time, there was at least five people with concealed carry in the gym at any point. When he posts this Trump memes, I just want to like just... I've been thinking about just post like a fucking uh, Clayton Bisbee fucking uh, me. Clayton <laughs> Bisbee. <laughs> oh, just to see if he even gets it. <laughs> we got we got nine more months of group chat poking and prodding at each other here. <laughs> uh, I love how. Um... They were like, you guys talk too much. So I'm just going to repost this so that you guys can touch it easier. I already couldn't. I mean, he, he texted it to me, but I didn't even have the uh, um, the link. I had to wait. I had to like ask him for it the other day. Yeah. And even then, like going into the group chat and stuff, I haven't added anything yet. I want to do the, uh, the interview thing probably in the next day or two. 
But, I just, um, yeah. Or like the with the shirt with the shirts on and that stuff. Yeah. You got to do the interview in the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, there's gotta be like one. selfie style, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that so on what, my day. What's the difference between a selfie video or just someone just putting it on a tripod and sitting there? I actually got to do one for for Clash of Titans too. I got to sit there and do these. <laughs> You're gonna do the exact same thing. You're just gonna swap shirts out. Yeah, but except I'm gonna have the belt on. Just put the belt. On. <laughs> you just just wear oh, a green clean. green shirt and just have someone just choose. <laughs> A green screen just for this. That the that's shirt. so convenient if you can do that. <laughs> yeah, it is, right? <laughs> it's you end up like moving and the entire shirt, like the design moves just like uh what was that show? Chowder. Yeah. I was yeah. It for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's it's different. I mean it's a little weird, like these interviews and like the media aspect of a powerlifting meet, but it is nice. Like the way Abs does it. Like I, I think I think I mean they're gonna do. I'm assuming they're gonna do like a press conference, like because they do like the weigh in and then the press conference right after. Like mm-hmm. you have like a ceremony, and then they'll sit you down and it's like a, like people ask questions, do a little shit talking, and then you kind of go fuck off until the next day. You know, yeah. it's kind of nice. Way to go. Put effort into like making it kind of like more of a professional sport. Yeah, I was talking to Amon at the pro, and I was I was. Telling them that I was looking at doing the uh the clash in twenty five because I already signed yeah. up for the the ghost clash and then the uh uh the meet the Voldemort meet so it was like yeah. perfect timing. It, it gives you time though too because then um you can buy the tickets with time. A lot of people ask like talk to me about traveling for meets and they're like oh it's so expensive I'm like it's really not if you just buy your ticket ahead of time like it's really not that expensive. And then if you if you really want to compare it, it's like you're willing to go to Virginia to Manassas for like, you know, a couple hundred dollars on a flight or to Miami, a couple hundred dollars on a flight where it's like if you look for Ireland, Dublin, I think I paid like 600 for a round trip nonstop when I went, you know, that's, not bad. Bad. that's like that's a good deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just got to you got to look with time. Like if you're going to book it two weeks prior, don't like you can't talk shit if it's expensive. Yeah. But if you give it a couple months, you get you get the invite, you commit, and then start looking at flights, you know what I mean? And yeah. Then you have your flight, it's not that expensive. The hotel I got out there when I went to Dublin was like it was like two fifty and it was like a four star hotel. It was really nice. And granted it was out of the way, but um it was really nice. The room was nice. It was it was I think the whole trip with the flight and the uh the hotel was like a thousand bucks, you know what I mean? Maybe a little bit more. That's really because it, it would have been cheaper had I got it with time. Because when I got the invite in August, I sh- the flights were four hundred bucks round trip nonstop. But then I waited and I got them in like December ish, end of December of uh, twenty two or whatever. So the flights got mm-hmm. up six and change. But either even either way, it was I think it's cheap considering when I was looking to come down here from Jersey. Newark, it was like around the same price for a, a, a trip down down to Miami. Mm. Yeah, you know, so it's like it's just whatever you want to do, but like the excuse that it's too expensive to travel overseas for me, it's just not there because you, if you're just a better planner, it's it's the it's cheaper. It's the same if not cheaper. Well, I mean, the the travel to wherever um, after the Voldemort meet would just be minimum minimum winnings. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Next meet with the winnings of the previous. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be it'll be it's affordable if you do it with time, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but well, sheesh, boys, we've been going here for about an hour and fifteen. This is usually double yeah. what we do, so we've got some pretty good stuff. Do you want to come back on for one of these again, Fern? If we have, um, because I feel like I don't know. I think I feel like it's kind of like. I wouldn't say round table-ish, but it's like when you have like a large group, it's kind of makes it a little easier just to kind of bounce back and forth and stuff. So if we have like four, at least leading up to this, and if we like have uh, like the, the Voldemort deal, and then um, we just ask someone kind of, as a guess. Yeah, we just kind of bounce back and forth, and then like it's kind of easy like this. And then like an hour, like we just like an hour 15, but like an hour is usually pretty solid because that way it's for me, like my attention 
span short. I feel like Instagram does that to us. So it's yeah, like absolutely. I can sit for an hour, you know what I mean? And then after that you kind of get a little squirrely or whatever. But yeah, this is good. Yeah, I gotta I gotta eat too. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I gotta go to die, die guy guy over here. steps in. I gotta get I'm gonna take a shower. I haven't taken a shower yet. It's the weekend. Bro, Don't yeah. shower until Monday. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that I'm gonna get that treadmill, bro. I'm gonna be crushing you on steps. We're gonna be gonna steps, be steps back and forth. Fiber. We're gonna be at two seventy five yeah. by by uh September. <laughs> <laughs> Green, <laughs> boys. Nah, you just gotta increase the intake of the fruity pebbles. Yeah. Yeah. Throw some adoption in there too. I'm on two hundred yeah. yeah. fruity pebbles a day. <laughs> It was like the biggest heartbreak. My coach was like, "You came McDonald's, even on like my my cheat days and like high days." Like today, I got favorite McDonald's tomorrow. But he was like, "What's your favorite cheat meals?" I'm like, "I like McDonald's burgers and pizza." He's like, "No McDonald's." I was like, "The wow. <laughs> 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 McDonald's." <laughs> That's like defeating the point of a, a of a cheat day. It's a cheat yeah. day, but just not McDonald's. Yeah, he was like, "No, I'm order a nice a nice pizza, eat it, and then get you know." Get ready for tomorrow, big squat day. Hell yeah. Do the same. See you at 10 a.m. Yes, sir. All right, fellas. Thanks Hustle up, the boys. Yeah. I'll see you, boys. I'll see you, boys. Yeah. Have a good one. See you guys. Stay Have small. See ya. See ya. Fern, kill that shit tomorrow. Appreciate it. See you guys.